This week in Drone News, we have three stories for you. An IACRA glitch that caused, well, let's call it mayhem. Uh, Arizona and Iowa uh, bills are trying to make flying a drone over houses a felony. And then finally, the American Security Drone Act of 2023 is in Congress. So let's talk about all this. Your first story this week is IACRA, which is the FAA's certificate application website, uh, had a technical issue this week that caused applications to be deleted. That is not good. Uh, this means that if you registered for IACRA for a new account between February 26 at 11.45 uh, p.m. Central and 5.30 p.m. on February 28, you will need to create a new IACRA account. Uh, and to complicate the matters, FTN numbers that were crea have been created in the meantime during that time, uh, which means that if you took the FA written exam and you put that I'm going to call it the old FTN number that was assigned to you. It's likely been assigned to somebody else in the meantime. And uh, by creating a new IACRA account, you'll be given a new FTN number, which unfortunately won't match with the FTN that you may have on your written exam. So this is a, a massive mess, unfortunately. Uh, we had a few students reach out to us because it happened to them. Uh, so if this applies to you, make sure that you contact the IACRA help desk because, well, when you submit your application, you're not going to be able to attach that that written exam to the application because it's not going to uh, match those two uh, IACRA numbers. So uh, big mess. I hope you guys figure it out. And our second story this week is actually a double story. Uh, we're going to be talking about two bills. One of them happened in Iowa and one happened in Arizona, where we are based. And uh, to talk about the Iowa one, I'm actually bringing a guest today. So uh, Ken Sherman is uh, a Part 107 pilot in Iowa and got pretty involved with this bill, uh, has been giving us updates. And so I decided to bring him on show. So, uh, Ken, welcome to the show. Thank you, Greg. Good to be here. Yeah, you've been providing a lot of updates on social media, and I appreciate that for sure. Uh, uh, Vic was the one who actually mentioned that to me, and uh, Vic Moss. And can you tell us maybe a little bit about what this bill uh, was proposing to do? And then we'll go into a little bit more of the details after that. Sure, sure. So the bill was something that came out that was a bill that was uh, proposed to keep and prevent um, unmanned aircraft from flying over certain properties. And as it was defined, it would prevent people from flying over what they defined as a homestead and a farmstead. And so one of the litmus drivers behind this was um, drones being flown over animal confinement areas. One of the fallouts of having this is that the homestead is defined also impacts people in residential areas where houses are very crowded together. And the end game of this if passed as is, would prevent most commercial drone pilots from ever happening because they would be illegal in doing things like flying over property edges for 3D mapping of farm fields and that sort of thing where you do need to pass over boundaries to get the complete picture. So that's the kind of short gist of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and th these are bills that we've seen kind of happen in the past as well uh, with other states. I know Texas had one for a while that was uh, overturned eventually. Uh, obviously, this sounds a whole lot like the state or municipalities are trying to control the airspace, which uh, we know is a, is a big no-no. So can you tell us how you get involved with this? You're a Part 107 pilot. What, what do you do exactly uh, as far as services? Yeah, so I'm a, I own a small business I have with my wife for seven years now. I do two things software consulting, and also I do um, aerial photography and videography as, as part of my business. So it's very important for us to be able to have unfettered access to the airways as well. In our local area, I think in our in our group that covers the whole state, we've got about 1,600 members in our Facebook group. So they're you know very in tune with um, drone activities and, and the needs for them and that sort of thing. And so um, I think it was about Sunday night, late in the evening, um, one of our, one of our uh, pilots, Danny Enziger, got message that this or word that this was happening and uh there were some tech started going around and by the next morning we were coalescing around this trying to find out what was needed to happen it formed a group to go in and um, testify at the subcommittee meeting on tuesday morning of this week so um, it's all happened very quickly and we've had a good group of people who have been able to coalesce around this and start putting up a um, defense against. And, and you mentioned that there were other people as well, not necessarily Part 107 pilots, but people maybe that hire Part 107 pilots, insurance companies, you said? Yeah. So um, w what you find and what we hadn't really, or I personally didn't account for, wasn't thinking about, is that in the Metro Des Moines area, we've got several nationally um, located insurance companies. Nationwide's one of them. They do a lot of um, real estate 
assessments from the air. And so um, the folks that also came to the bat were, were people like them who said that, um, you know, we need to do this to keep our business going. That's the way we do this today. So um, we're in urban areas where we need the ability to go in and fly over other people's rooftops. One of the issues in the bill was that um, I think they had a clause in there that said, you can fly over this land as long as you've got permission. And so one of the topics talked is that, well, um, to get permission in a neighborhood of a full square uh, block, you've got maybe 50 houses. The time to do this is going to be impossible. And so um, there's other things, consequences from even thinking about the simple thing of getting permissions yep. that become Absolutely. roadblocks. Uh, so you guys went to the meeting on Tuesday. How, what was the reception on the other side from the, the bill creator? The folks with the bill, I think, were very largely putting on their poker faces. Um, they were receptive of things. And we took the approach of let's educate. And we brought up things where today we've got a really good budding drone industry in the state. And you've got to keep in mind that this is a bill that um, is largely based off of folks coming from the rural areas that depend on the farm economy. And so we took the approach that um, let's talk to them about things in the farm economy that today are happening because of drones that are really benefiting them. And so um, we talked about the things about um, aerial mapping that's used in precision farm um, farming today, um, things like uh, aerial spraying of crops, that sort of thing. And we actually had people show up in our group who actually are uh, TSDs for a couple of large companies that are doing the aerial mapping and testified to the impact on their businesses and the need to be able to fly over farm boundaries, or farm, farm boundaries, boundaries, excuse me there. So um, we had a number of other people in the industry who are currently uh, successfully running businesses, need these things to happen that were able to speak to this. I think um, by and large, I think most of the people on the committee understood this. Um, we actually had one committee member that even after, after testimony of an hour um, from all the other concerns who were supportive of keeping the drone industry alive and moving forward that did not grasp it. Um, so Interesting. there are some challenges there. So what's the, uh, uh, what's the yeah. next step now for, for the bill? Is there, are they going to go back to draft and, and resubmit something? Yeah. So um, in the state, this coming Friday is what's called the funnel deadline. And if bills don't make it out of committee, they don't move forward for the rest of the year and they're, they're tabled, basically. And so um, their first objective was to get it out of committee. And I believe the vote that they took was to get it out of committee. And so it's met that threshold. And their act is to go and take amendments to it and debate it on the floors, both House and Senate um, type of thing. So what we don't know is timelines on when those things will be happening. Those are things we need to get our arms around and what offers are being, amendment, are being made. And we need to contact legislatures and um, get some notions of that and provide input on those type of things that probably would be useful for us. Those are kind of first steps. Yeah, there's more than that. <laughs> and we're actually facing the same thing here in Arizona, uh, which I'm going to talk next in this uh, in this story, but uh, pretty much exactly the same bill it looks like. And they're uh, trying to uh, prevent drone pilots from flying over anybody's property. Uh, was was there any mention of uh, the the word surveillance uh, being added to any of this, which we've seen? And yeah, so that's a really good point. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. In reality, the bill is is labeled. I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head. It defined two different things. One is an unmanned aircraft, um, and those aren't quite the terms that they used. Um, but the other one is they de define surveillance and they define that as anything that's that is a camera and oh, can wow. fly over property, basically. And so what they legitimately did is um, went and categorized as every drone operation yeah, as a bad. surveillance operation. And if you cross the property line, you would be it would be criminalized as I can't remember quite exactly, but I think it was at least a misdemeanor and the penalties were yeah. fairly significant. And that's unfortunate because the, the surveillance thing is is something that I think is important to the industry, that we have a surveillance clause so that drones are not used to do this type of activity. But once you define surveillance as any flight, then it definitely becomes a major issue. So um, how can uh, people that are watching this, which I'm sure a lot of them uh, will be in the area, how can they help? What, uh, what, what do you need on your side to uh, continue fighting this. What we can do is provide you with a link to some of our Facebook groups and other content where we can provide that 
information because I don't have that off the top of my head. But there are legislatures that can be written to um, very effectively, I think. That type of input probably would be very helpful at this point in time, more people speaking up on the need for this type of thing. I think the other thing that I would uh, caution people to do is this stuff just comes out of nowhere. Um, there's no way that you can keep your eyes and out yep. and available anywhere. So you've got to really be on the ball, have people looking for this stuff and uh, really be engaged in the in the community. Um, that's the one way that we've got the ability to help. Do, do you have any attorney in your group that are helping with, uh, with any of this? Um, I've been in touch with a number of folks at the national level, and we're starting to try to locate somebody who is a um, also a pilot. Okay. So it's in the works. Okay, awesome. Well, we'll put links down in the in the description. So if you live in Iowa and you're you're willing to help, or even a neighboring state, uh, and you do work uh, in uh, in that area in that state, then make sure that you reach out uh, to Ken and to the group, and uh, hopefully we can uh, squash that and do the same here in Arizona, quite frankly. So, well, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Thank you for getting involved with this. Uh, please keep us posted because I think this affects uh, potentially more people across the country if uh, one of these states is able to implement something like this. So. Uh, if you see something, say something. We have a lot of students sending us messages uh, from time to time when this stuff happens. So, uh, Ken, again, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. All right. Thank you, too, Greg. And your final story this week is yet another bill. Yeah, I know, a lot of bills this week. This one is in the U.S. Senate. Uh, the bill is titled American Security Drone Act of 2023, uh, which would prohibit federal departments and agencies from purchasing and using UAS manufactured uh, and assembled in countries identify as a security threat. Now, the bill would also prohibit the use of federal funds, grants, or contracts from purchasing the drones on the uh, newly proposed list. Now, I'm not quite sure, quite frankly, how different this is from the current law uh, that prohibits the federal government from using any of these Chinese-made drones, but uh, this might just be an extension or renewal of that bill. So I'm going to put a link down uh, right here for the Drone Excel article. Uh, if you want to learn more from that. And if you haven't seen our latest video uh, reviewing a bunch of Sonova accessories for the Mini 3 Pro, make sure you head over to this link right here. Uh, be sure that you actually also subscribe to the channel. We have a very cool new video uh, that's queued up uh, for next week where we try to find missing people in the forest around Prescott. Uh, this is a very entertaining one. So see you next week. Ben, this is a one-taker. No bloopers for you. It became personal with me. DJI released the... In this week's drone news update, we will we will cover the first categorized... No, I don't know why it doesn't want to do that. We will cover the first categorized drone... Can I say don't be that guy? Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This, sto this story, we've got four weeks. No. And then we'll talk... No, I just don't have the flow on these intros. Do you want me to redo it? Like this? Oh, like this? Yeah. You can reuse those at will. See you next week. And no bloopers. Bada bing, bada boom. He's out of line, but he's right. <laughs>